This illustration here is a photograph of what in museums uh, throughout the Middle East and the world that have Egyptian artifacts in them, they would call this artifact from ancient Egypt a ritual object. Unfortunately, a ritual object is simply what modern Western museum curators call any object that they're given from ancient Egypt that they do not understand the purpose of. Actually, what this is is a geometric emitter of energy. According to the actual shape of this object, with this hemispherical cap at the top, and these zigzag lines that modify the quality of energy. This is actually used as a pendulum in ancient Egypt. And from the base of this pendulum would be emitted a penetrating carrier wave of energy. And we're going to be talking more about these principles. But it's important to understand that this exact form of so-called ritual object, this pendulum from ancient Egypt, there are artifacts of this kind at least 5,000 years old, perhaps older, and literally hundreds of these have been found and are in museums around the world. So we know that many people were trained in this science in ancient Egypt and used these things on a regular basis. And today in the Egyptian work in biogeometry, we use these types of tools as well. Now in modern times, the term that is used primarily in Europe for this type of energy work is radiesthesia. Radiesthesia is the science of being able to detect subtle radiations or subtle energies that are primarily non-electromagnetic in nature and cannot be detected by most scientific equipment. However, virtually every spiritual tradition around the world understands the existence of these subtle energies. In the East, they might call it chi or ki or prana. It has different names in different places around the world. But these vital energies, although they cannot be detected by modern electromagnetic scientific equipment, nonetheless exist and have a powerful effect on all living beings. So radiesthesia is the term that we're going to be using, connected both to modern European work and to the ancient Egyptian science of energy. So again, we see the illustration of this particular pendulum from ancient Egypt which is known as the WAJ. If we put it in English, it would be W-A-D-J. And then some other radiesthesia energy detection and creation tools coming from modern European work. So from ancient Egypt, the knowledge held in ancient Egypt went in multiple directions. And one place that it went is that some of the knowledge of the Egyptian radiesthesia became connected to knowledge held in certain circles in Europe in the Catholic Church. And so we see illustrations such as this, Saint Luiger, a Christian saint using Egyptian radiesthesia. In this old woodblock print of Saint Luiger, in one hand he's holding the form of a cathedral. In the other hand he's holding the form of a staff. Now we know from uh, old Egyptian text and from the Old Testament that in ancient Egypt they used the form of scepters or staffs of different types for all types of energetic or so-called magical purposes. But as Arthur C. Clarke once said, magic is simply a term that we give to a sufficiently advanced form of technology that we do not understand. So its effects seem to us to be magic. But when we understand this Egyptian science of energy, things that appear to be magic can now be understood as a type of spiritual science. So one thing I want to bring out here when we look at the form of the staff held in the hand of St. Luiger is that there are projections at various levels of this staff. And many artifacts of this kind still exist in European museums. The projected levels, it might be marked by a precious stone or by a precious metal of some kind, but they clearly showed where to hold the staff at certain points. Now this is related to an important part of the Egyptian science of energy. When they use a pendulum, or they use a staff, something of that kind, they will use the pendulum in this Egyptian body of work quite differently than a pendulum is often used in most European or North American circles of dowsing. They don't use it normally to ask a mental question and get an answer. Instead, they fine-tune the length of the cord on the pendulum to a particular length and that length of the string on the pendulum allows them to detect a specific quality of energy at that exact string length. It's the, the length that is in resonance with what we would think of as a wavelength of a particular type of energy. 
Now applied to this picture of St. Luiger, the same principle applied to the staffs. So if he held the staff at one particular place, that gave him a particular length on the staff that correlated to a wavelength. So held at one particular place, he could detect, let's say, underground water. Held at a different place on the staff, he might be able to detect a detrimental energy spot on the earth that needs to be avoided. At another place on the staff, he might be able to detect a uh, powerful emanation of a spiritual energy spot that is very beneficial to all living beings and where they would want to build the cathedral. So in fact, showing him with the staff means that he has the capacity, knowing this form of the Egyptian temple science as it then moved into later eras and parts of the world, where he could directly detect the different qualities of energy, he would know where to build the cathedral, and he could even detect the form the cathedral needed to have in its shape, in the sacred geometry of the cathedral, so it would have the right energetic qualities to be used as a sacred site. Now everything that I've just mentioned in being able to use these types of tools to detect these different energy qualities and do practical work, all of this is taught in modern Egyptian biogeometry. Around the year 1900, some of the knowledge that was held in these uh, circles in Europe, particularly in parts of the Catholic Church connected to the Jesuit order, there were books that were written by Jesuit priests <clears throat> that appeared in French around the year 1900. Particularly, very important one was by Abbe Mermet, a Jesuit priest living in Switzerland. And these French texts by the Jesuits describe the way that they did practical work with uh, radiesthesia. And Abbe Mermet was well known, and in his work he described how he could detect underground water, minerals, missing persons, things of that kind. Well, once these texts came out, and they were joined by other books which had titles such as The Radiesthesia of the Missionaries, describing how this was used by uh, Catholic missionaries going to places around the world as a hidden science, there began to be a popular movement in France in the early 1900s of people freely exploring this type of energy science. Now unfortunately, in North America today, there's almost no knowledge of this entire body of work that came out in France and in Europe in the early 1900s. However, I'm just going to briefly touch on it because this work that was done at that time, particularly starting in the 1930s in France, allowed them to begin to rediscover important pieces of the Egyptian temple science. And so without going into all the details that we go into in the biogeometry training, we'll simply say that books such as this appeared, Microvibrational Physics and Invisible Forces, that again had the form of the Egyptian pendulum on the front of it, and described the way that these researchers began to find many of the keys to the Egyptian temple science. Particularly, they did work on what was known as shape-caused waves. That was their term for the energy they could actually detect coming from different shapes or from artifacts from ancient Egypt that existed in France at that time. Now, one of the very brilliant things that they did is they found ways to be able to detect the entire spectrum of living energies that make up our world. And without going into all the details, I will simply tell you that they divided that full spectrum of living energies into 12 different energy qualities. And they were able to find how these energy qualities propagate on different surfaces, everything from the surface of the Earth to a two-dimensional circle and many other shapes as well. But they had the capacity then to directly detect all 12 energies. And with these 12 energies, there is both a beneficial aspect and a detrimental aspect to all 12 energy bands. <clears throat>